If parties to a written contract intend for the contract to recite their entire agreement, the parole evidence rule prohibits any evidence about a contract's terms beyond the writing itself. After the sale of land, the parties disputed whether the sale included the furniture on the property, and the seller tried to couch his argument in the parole evidence rule, in Brown v. Oliver. Mary and Oliver owned land with a hotel. He leased the hotel to another, but sold the property to Frank Brown. The sale didn't affect the lease. Oliver and Brown went to a scrivener, meaning someone like a notary or clerk who could draft important papers. The scrivener drafted a contract for the sale of the land. The contract didn't mention the hotel's furniture or other personal property. Oliver and Brown signed the contract. Oliver didn't take any furniture at the time of the sale. Over two years later, Oliver took over a lease for the hotel. But Brown didn't want Oliver on the property. So Oliver left in the night and took the hotel's furniture with him. Brown claimed he owned the furniture and filed a suit for Replevin to force Oliver to return the furniture. There was evidence that Oliver and Brown verbally agreed that the hotel's furniture was part of the sale. The Scrivener testified that he couldn't remember any of the information he used to write the contract. And Brown testified that he and Oliver didn't discuss the furniture with the Scrivener because the two had already discussed personal property. Oliver argued that the contract was the only evidence that could be considered to determine what he sold to Brown, and that any parole evidence, like any discussions about the furniture, wasn't admissible. The court held that the contract was complete, but only addressed the sale of the land. As a result, the jury was allowed to consider parole evidence to decide whether Oliver's sale to Brown included the furniture. The jury found for Brown. Oliver appealed.